Welcome to the Gathering Church program. Sharing God's love and compassion with everyone in every nation around the world. And helping you find answers you need every day. From Moravian Falls, North Carolina, here's Dr. David White. We're so grateful that you've joined us today. I encourage you to uh, invite someone to be a part of this broadcast, this program. We're going to minister from the Word of God. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's an initial faith that one has when they respond and they invite Jesus into their heart. But it's also a faith that grows. We're to increase in our faith. And I believe this is going to be that kind of day. You know, the Bible says Jesus is the one who was and is and is to come. And we are grateful. We want to build a foundation on who he was. But we also have great hope and expectancy that he's going to come again. And there's going to be an unfolding revelation of Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk some about that even in this program. But also he's the God who is. He's the one who is right now all that you need. He is the one that can do things. He can move mountains. He's the healer. He's the savior. He's the deliverer. Father, we commit this program to you. We thank you for your mercies, your grace, your power, your love that was poured out at the cross for us. And Lord, we pray today, let this be a day of salvation a day of healing, a day of deliverance, a day of miracles, signs and wonders. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Now, we're going to have a song of worship. We'll come back and get in the Word of God for today. I want to begin today out of the book of Revelation, and if you've been with us before, you remember the revelation is a revealing, it is an uncovering of Jesus Christ, 
the last days is all about Jesus. Now, there are also going to be some amazing, powerful, earth-shattering events that are going to accompany his coming in this season of time, his presence coming upon the earth. And I want to read about that today. And if you have a Bible, you follow along, but it's taken over in Revelation chapter 11. Now, listen to this. It says, then the seventh angel sounded. This is the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet. And there's a great sound. And it says, and there were loud voices in heaven. And, you know, there are many voices on the earth, but we want to hear above what heaven says about the times in which we're living and this hour and how to prepare for these days. We want to hear from heaven. It's only when you've been convicted from above by the Holy Spirit that one can come to faith in Jesus Christ. So there were loud voices in heaven, and they were saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. You know, I've heard it said when you're going through something, we know the end of the story. We know what is to come, that we win when it's all said and done. And this is one of those kind of passages. There are things that are happening on the earth. In verse 19, it says there are lightnings and there are thunderings and a great earthquake and great hail. And there are things happening that are accompanying this event, the, the seventh trumpet that is being sounded. And then we're going to see a little bit more. It goes on and it says, and the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshiped God. So whatever all these 24 elders were doing around the throne of God, when they heard this sound from heaven, they, they stopped everything. They fell on their faces and they began to worship God. And they gave him thanks. In fact, in, fact, in verse 17, it says, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty. Now that's a word to us. A remembrance that whatever happens in this life, we should be thankful in all things. In all ways, every day, give thanks unto him, for this is the will of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So they they give thanks unto the Lord, the Lord God Almighty. Now, if you've been with us before on these programs, you know that Almighty means exactly what it says. He is the Almighty One. There's none mightier, none greater, none more powerful than our God. And Jesus Christ has come to demonstrate who God is as he lived a life and then rose from the dead because he died for our sin. But let's go on. He's the one. Now, Jesus is the one who is and who was and who is to come. We've spoken about that before, that we have a foundation of faith in Jesus but we have the promise of his coming again, but we want to have him present with us every day. I need him every day. Mercies, I need his mercies every day. And his mercies are new every morning. They're available. So he goes on. He says, because you've taken your great power and you've reigned. Now we know that in the, as when everything winds up, when all the smoke clears on planet earth, At the very end of the age, there's only one going to be reigning and ruling, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in verse 18, it says, the nations were angry and your wrath has come. We know that those who rejected God, those who resist him, the rebellious, the wicked, they're only going to become even more angry when his judgments begin to be poured out on the earth. We see an example of that in Psalm chapter two, where it says the nations were in a rage. They were in great anger and uh, they, they had plots and they were vainly carrying out these plans. And yet God, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh because he's gonna speak to them in his wrath. There's gonna be a day of reckoning, a day of judgment. For everyone, all of the nations of the earth, we're going to get there. It says, for the nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged. You know, the Bible says it is appointed man wants to die and then the judgment. We're all going to stand before God. Some only the judgment seat of Christ at a time of great reward. 
but others will stand before the great white throne judgment. And they'll, they'll, all their lives will be played out before them. And they'll have to give an account. You don't want to be a part of the great white throne judgment. But he goes on, he says, that at that time, the dead will be judged And that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints. And I believe that is the judgment seat of Christ where there will be these rewards given for those who served him and followed him. The martyrs and so much. It's a whole teaching. We'll get to that one day. And those who fear your name, small and great. Whatever happens on planet earth from here on out, I personally believe we're living at the end of the age. There are many events going to accompany the second coming of Jesus Christ. But those who have a fear of God will not fear the things coming on the earth because they'll be engrossed with the fear of God. Their faith in him will be greater than the faith of the things coming on the world. He says, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Now, there's a whole lot to unpackage in that little bitty phrase. God will destroy those who destroy the earth. We don't have enough time to get there today. But it's going to happen. And then verse 19, then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings and noises and thunderings and earthquake, and all of these things are going to unfold on the earth. Now, last week, here where I live, in this part of America, we had an unbelievable light show in the heavens. They were called the Northern Lights. Now, I've heard about them all my life. I've never seen them. Or if I have, I don't remember. My wife and I, it's a phenomenon. that just happens occasionally. Certain things have to happen in the atmosphere. You see this light show in the heavens. My wife and I, we went out to a lake, and we found a... Uh, a place where you could go out on a pier and we laid down on the pier. We looked up into the heavens and my wife was taking a lot of pictures. It was amazing, red lights and lines and and, uh, it's an amazing sight. But you know, the Bible says there are signs in the heavens to declare not only his glory, but to declare what he's speaking at this time. And in this scripture, We should be paying attention to the signs in the heavens because that's what this scripture is all about. There's a seventh trumpet that is sounded and there are great earthquakes and lightnings. There are things that are happening in the heavens and we're reminded of the one who was and is and is to come and his greatness of his power that God is going to come and judge individuals, but he's going to also judge the nations. Now, that's where we want to go. I don't know that I'm going to get through this message today. We may just do part one, and then next week we'll get to part two. But I've already mentioned Psalm chapter two. Remember, there's a, the nations are going to be judged, and they were angry. And the wicked will only become even more angry because when the judgments of God are poured out on the earth. Now, the righteous are going to rejoice because they know his redemption draws nigh. Now, it's interesting that in these last days, there's a global order that Satan, and he has his ambassadors, that they have this great dream of recreating the Tower of Babel and creating a global government. It will only last for just a short amount of time, and Jesus will come And he will end it all. There's only one kingdom going to be standing when all is said and done. And that's the kingdom of our God. And that's what this is about. It says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Now, God loves individuals. He loves you. If you were the only person that would ever have lived on planet earth. God would have still sent his son to die for you because that's who he is. He's a God that loves individuals. He wants you to know who do you say he is. He would have died for you if you had been the only person. But he also died for nations. And we're living at a time in the earth that God is reaching out to nations, discipling nations. Many of you 
He's getting you ready to go to nations with the gospel to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that's what's happening right now through this broadcast in Africa or wherever you're watching from. The gospel is going forth around the world. It's the gospel to the nations. Now, that's what I want to talk about for the rest of the time. Today, we'll only get into just a little bit of the message. Then next week, we'll get back to part two. But it's the gospel to the nations because ultimately, he's coming. He's going to reign his kingdom forever and among the nations. You know, even back in Psalm 2, when he judges the nations, he says a command, ask of me. And I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. So what does the Bible say about nations and nations coming to Jesus Christ? Well, first of all, in Matthew chapter 24, there's a very important scripture. I may have shared this with some of you before if you've been watching the program. But this was a number of years ago. And I was invited to be a part of a mission team into a communist nation where the gospel was banned. You couldn't preach the gospel. It was into the USSR, the the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. Some of you, you remember uh, that was a real, you know, nation or group of nations. Others of you, you're too young, you'll have to look in your history book, but it was a real uh, place, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. The gospel was banned. It was a communist nation. They invited us to be a part of a team, or I was invited to preach the gospel there. So we flew into Warsaw, Poland, and I remember we boarded on a, on a train, actually, before we got on a bus. We got on a train from Warsaw to the border of the Soviet Union. We got on a bus And that's how we were going to go into the Soviet Union. And I was a part of a team that would be preaching the gospel that had not heard the gospel in like 70 years, except where there had been, you know, they'd smuggled in Bibles and there were underground churches and things like that. But the gospel was banned. So we're sitting out in a bus and it took a long time for them to approve our visas. They, my, our, the, the, the team leader went in to this, you know, building wasn't that impressive of a place, but anyway, it's communism, a communist nation. Nothing was that impressive. Communism s- destroys everything. So anyway, they're in this little hut. They, it takes forever. And everybody on the bus was concerned that we wasted our money. You know, if we come all this way, spend all this money to come to the border of the Soviet Union and not get in, and I was concerned myself. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, turn to Matthew 24, 14. So I opened my Bible and I read that chapter or that verse in chapter 24. It said, and this gospel shall be preached in all the world, in all the nations as a witness, and then the end shall come. I quoted that verse to the people on the bus. All of everyone's countenance changed. We went from sadness or, you know, doubt to uh, great faith. We were going to get in. I told them we're going to get in because it's God's will that this gospel will be preached in all the nations of the earth. And that's what happened. Right after that, the team leader came back with our visas. They were stamped. We were given approval to enter into a nation that had not heard the gospel in 70 years. And so it is in this day. The good news of Jesus Christ is going to be preached all over the world as a great witness, as a great testimony of what God is doing and his power, his authority, his kingdom that is coming and that dwells within all the believers. You know, I believe that the word actually witness is going to be witness there is the word our martyr. And uh, there may be many that will give their lives for the cause of the gospel, but I believe it's evidence given. You and I are being prepared to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, and there'll be evidence with the message we preach, the gospel, with signs and wonders, powerful demonstrations. I pray that'll happen right now, wherever you are, whatever you're facing in life. Some of you are battling cancer. Some of you are battling some major disease. The doctors have said there's no hope for you. I tell you there is hope. 
as long as there's breath and as long as God is who he says he is, and he is. And I believe right now through the preaching of the word, the Bible says he sent his word and his word healed them. And I pray for healing power right now, miracles, signs and wonders right now where you live. Now, the second thing about nations is we are to disciple the nations. I believe that's what's happening. Revival broke out in Uganda. That's why we're on this television program to begin with because I was just being obedient, preaching the simple gospel on Grace Radio in Mubara, Uganda, and revival came, and it's been going on for three years now, and now we believe it's spreading to many places. But I want to read this. We're to be discipling nations. Now, this is found over in Matthew chapter 28. It's called the Great Commission. Uh, Some people look at it as a great suggestion. No, it's a great commission. Listen to this. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. You know, wherever God sends us, there's an appointed place, an ordained place that God sends us to do his will. And I believe he's getting you, many of you ready to go to places around the world to do the will of God. It says, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Now, this has always been a puzzlement to me. Some worshiped the Lord. They were excited to see him, and others doubted as to who he was. But that didn't stop Jesus from still giving all of his disciples the Great Commission. This is really amazing. So, Some doubted, some worshiped, but Jesus came and spoke to them and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, when I read that scripture, I seem to gravitate toward the end of that. We're going to talk about all of it. But he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I believe we're living at the end of the age. My prayer is, Lord, you promised you'd be with me. And I'm, I'm believing it. And I'm telling you, he'll be with you, especially as the end of the age begins or continues to unfold. So he's appointed a place. He's called us to disciple nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I've always looked at this, and I heard someone say, and I believe it, that yes, we baptize people in water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but we're to immerse. The word uh, baptize means to immerse. So we're immersing people in all that the Father is, all that the Son is, and all the Holy Spirit. We're teaching them about the Father. For example, God the Father is a good, good Father. Do you know that? Some of you, your Father wasn't that good. You don't even know your Father. If you know Jesus, you have a heavenly Father. He's a good Father that's always working for our good. All things work together for good to them that love Him and are called according to his purpose. And if you're his son, you know Jesus, you have a heavenly father that's a good father. He's a loving father. Now he's also a disciplining father. Whom he loves, he disciplines. If, he's, if he doesn't discipline us, then he doesn't love us. Any loving father disciplines his son. And, but that's who he is. He's an everlasting father. Some of you, your father has gone away But if you know God as your father, he'll never go away. He's the father of the fatherless, the father of the lonely and the weary. Then there's the testimony of his son who lived, who died, who rose from the dead and who's coming again. And we focus on that, on this program. And then there's the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I go away, I'll send the helper, the Holy Spirit, who will be with you. And he'll be in you. And he is the one that draws us to Jesus Christ. The Bible says no one can come to the Father unless the Son draws him. And no one can know the Son unless by the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. I believe as I've been preaching the word that some of you came under conviction by the Spirit. You know you need a Savior. Your question is how do I know? 
How do I know God? How do I come to know Jesus? You come to know him by acknowledging that God is real and that you need him and that God sent his son, Jesus Christ. You believe that Jesus was sent from the Father into the world, that he lived, that he died, and that he rose from the dead. You must be willing to repent of your sin. That means change your mind as to who God is and who you are in need of a Savior. And then you change the direction of your life. You're willing to turn from living your own way and turn to live your life for Jesus Christ. I want to lead you in a prayer. Don't pray this just because I'm praying it, but you mean it. But it's just a sample prayer. But the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I want to ask you to pray with me. You pray this, and I believe that as you call upon his name, you'll be saved. Say, dear God, I need you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who lived, who died and rose from the dead. I confess I need a savior. I believe that your blood that you shed for me will forgive me of all my sin. I call upon you right now. I receive you by faith. I turn from my sin and I turn my life over to you. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, you confess with your mouth, you call upon him, you will be saved. Welcome to the family of God. I want to pray right now. God, touch people. I pray for miracles, signs, and wonders. Lord, I pray where people need a miracle, let it happen right there where they are. God, thank you. Nothing is impossible with you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. I'll pick up next week with part two of this message. Thank you for watching today's program. If you made a decision to trust in Jesus or God has touched your life, please email us at itrustjesus2023 at gmail.com. See you next week at the same time and same place. And may God richly bless you.